Welcome everybody to another episode of the Battery Talk. Today we're going to talk about the battery cell testing. The battery cell is the smallest unit of the battery, but it is of very, very high importance. We're going to meet Benoit Stolin, the department manager for business development for power electronics. Let's go. Hey Benoit, how are you? Hi David, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good, thanks. So let's get started uh, with the battery cell talk. I was mentioning the um, increasing demand of cell testing and the importance of cell testing these days. Uh, can you tell us something about it from your perspective? Indeed, David. Uh, the cell is uh, the most important com component in an uh, electric vehicle um, because it basically drives charging time and driving range, which are two key uh, characteristic of an EV for uh, uh, mass consumer adoption. Um, therefore, the cell needs to be controlled extremely well in terms of cost, performance, uh, and supply chain. Um, the battery pack needs to provide good performance over the whole lifetime of the EV. Uh, and since the cell is the heart of the battery pack, it needs to be understood extremely well. And you can only do that by doing cell testing, by testing the cell so that you understand it deeply uh, and can drive your engineering decision. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what exactly is the output of, of cell testing? Um, yeah, what, what's the result after you go through with the process? We could summarize that in four main outputs. The first one would be uh, you get several cells and you want to compare the cells from different suppliers uh, and so for that you need, you need to test them. Uh, basically it's cell, it's, um, cell benchmarking. Uh, the second one is testing the cell to get data to feed your model so that you can make simulation. We all know the advantages of simulation. The third one is to understand what is good and bad for the cell so that when you design your battery pack around the cell, you ensure good condition for better lifetime. And the last one is to uh, feed uh, uh, and program the BMS, battery management system, uh, software, sorry, which uh, will take care of the cell over the, the life of the battery pack. To take care of these cells, it needs to understand them very well. And so for that, you need to test the cells to feed accurate data to the BMS. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, of those four mentioned points, uh, what are the crucial parameters and what, what are the most important um, uh, dimensions? So you basically need very high um, testing results quality. Uh, because you may have two cells that look very similar at the beginning, same performance, but over a lifetime, uh, the performance would degrade, uh, um, um, and maybe differently depending on the cell. And it's very, you, you cannot test over the whole lifetime of a cell, so it's very important to detect these performances loss, losses uh, over uh, a, a shorter period of time, so at the very beginning of the lifetime of uh, the cell. So uh, I'm guessing it's a pretty small difference you have to measure there, right? Um, like uh, how small are we talking? Um, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a good point. When you look at the beginning, you might see two cells uh, uh, with, uh, we all know about capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, capacity is key because it's basically the capability of the cell to store energy and deliver it so that you can drive longer. Um, and if we, capacity of course degrades over lifetime, uh, at the very beginning of the lifetime of the cell, uh, this capacity degradation might look, as you said, extremely small. Uh, but this little degradation over many, many charge and discharge cycles uh, would create a big problem after a few years mm -hmm. of usage. And so you need to measure extremely well capacity from the very beginning to understand uh, if the cell is good or bad in terms of lifetime performance. Okay. And what do you need to be this accurate? So what's, what's the requirement for your uh, measurement device? Well, basically capacity is uh, current amperes multiplied by time hours. Mm -hmm. uh, so to measure it accurately, you basically need to measure very accurately, obviously current uh, with a high time resolution. And since your capacity test is uh, defined with a start and stop condition based on voltage, you also need to measure accurately voltage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, 
you found a way, right? Um, or is there a way, or, or did you did you find a way to combine both me measurements in one device, or do you need separate devices, or even two test cycles, or how is it done? Yes, we we've been working very hard to uh, basically uh, um, set the the all these parameters, so uh, current measurement, time resolution, and voltage measurement, in order to achieve 0.01 percent capacity measurement accuracy. Okay. Now you lost me, like 0.01 capacity, what does it mean? I, I, I understand. So let's take a, a very good example to, uh, to uh, explain that, that better. Uh, so you, I'm sure you have a phone. Uh, can you tell me for, for how long you had it and uh, how many time did you charge and, well, how many time did you charge it? Yeah, I think like uh, for three years and uh, I charge it almost every day. So let's just say a thousand cycles probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good assumption. Um, so 1,000 cycles over three years, uh, and how many, uh, how much capacity, maximum capacity is remaining on this phone? Yeah, not that much. I would say I would estimate like 80% left. So I lost probably 20% over those three years. Right. So if we if we do the math, uh, so um, 20 percent, you lost 20% over 1,000 cycles. That's basically a loss per cycle of 0.02%. Mm -hmm. Uh, which sounds very small, but to be able to detect this uh, capacity degradation as early as possible, you need to measure more accurately than this very small degradation. Mm, okay. uh, and for example, in our case, we could provide the right result, the right quality result, because uh, we would measure with 0.01% uh, accuracy, so we can see something, a phenomena, uh, which is 0.02% small. Mm, okay, yeah, thanks for this great example. Uh, it's, it's really uh, a really good example, but let's get back to vehicles, right? Our Volkswagen Salzgitter lab, um, we saw a lot of channels there. So can you explain why it's necessary for an OEM to have uh, uh, so many cells in parallel to test them? It's a good question. So, well, um, cell testing um, requires a lot of time. Uh, one, one test can last from anywhere from uh, one or two weeks up to nine months, mm -hmm. uh, one test on one cell. Uh, so as you can imagine, that, that consumes one channel for nine months, that's a lot. Uh, so it takes, uh, yeah, it takes a lot of time. On top of that, you need to uh, test many, many samples to statistically uh, make sure that your results are, are correct and reliable. Mm -hmm. uh, so that basically requires a lot of cell testing channels. Okay, yeah, that totally makes sense. So I, I bet it takes a lot of energy to run this lab and thus uh, produces a lot of CO2 emissions. Mm -hmm. So especially in these days when regulations get uh, stricter day-to-day, uh, -day, so to say, um, uh, how do the OEMs handle this or, or how can we, we as AVL support the OEM? It's a, it's a very good point. This, this is very important for the future. A lot of uh, car makers and other companies are trying to be uh, CO2 neutral. Uh, for that, we basically make our uh, cell testing devices as efficient as possible so that we help them in uh, making better usage of the energy they, they, they take so that they can uh, um, achieve better these uh, CO2 emission targets. In addition, we can also equip uh, the, the testing facility with our AVL lab management software, which would optimize the energy consumption over the whole facility uh, to again help reducing the CO2 footprint. Okay, right. Good point. Uh, we're going to have another bad talk on lab management and facility design, uh, where we will go into detail on this one. And uh, so you mentioned uh, uh, different cell types. So how does uh, how does those different cell types um, affect the measurement equipment? Well, basically, yeah, you, you, it's, a, it's a good point. You have a lot of different cells. Uh, you basically have three form factors. Uh, uh, and if, within these three form factors, you have a lot of different sizes. So you have cylindrical, potch, and prismatic. These are the three formats. Uh, and uh, the, the sizes varies a lot. You may want, you, you, you go from anywhere from a, a cylindrical cell, the size of a, a finger, up to a, a large a pouch or prismatic cell to pack cell, the size of two arms. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty pretty big difference, right? Okay, uh, so how does the size and the material and, and, and the, of the cell uh, impact the measurement equipment? Um, so it's uh, yeah you've you've seen as you as you highlighted you we, we've seen this variability of different 
uh, of different uh, cell size. Uh, the, the materials don't impact too much because the, the chemistries uh, they might be very different. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, at the end, uh, the main target of cell testing and performance for the cell is, is similar. Uh, but the size is a big, has a big impact. Uh, in our cell testing solution, we, we have mainly four, four main points. Uh, we need to hold and fix the cell, we need to cycle it electrically, mm -hmm. and we need to condition it thermally. For that, we use uh, cell fixtures to hold and fix it, cell cyclers to electrically cycle it, and climatic chamber to condition it. And we basically combine these uh, three elements into one solution, um, which is basically uh, configurable to fit a very small cells, cylindrical, uh, to a very large cells, and that is also later on scalable, so that uh, uh, um, cell, test cell testers, uh, people with cell testing need, can uh, scale up and down uh, their laboratory depending on the new cells they want to test. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Benoit. I think uh, that was a really good uh, introduction into cell testing. Uh, to conclude, uh, we heard something about the increasing demand of cells from the OEM side because uh, Electromobility is increasing. We heard something about accuracy. It's very important to measure accurately. We heard something about different sizes, different types of cells, and uh, uh, the variability of the testing equipment, and the scalability in case uh, OEMs have to test a high number of cells um, for, for a statistical representation of the tests. So, um, very great insight. And um, yeah, I think. Uh, uh, you, you seem to have uh, uh, worked out a pretty good solution here at AVL to, to come up to all these uh, requirements, right? Well, thank you, David, but it, it's, it's not only me. Uh, AVL puts a lot of importance on uh, electric transportation. Uh, that's why we have uh, uh, very large teams uh, working extremely actively to, to create this, this um, great and disruptive and cutting-edge solution. Uh, and this solution will basically uh, enable uh, uh, to go towards a uh, future of transportation. Okay, yeah, great. So Benoit, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me, David. Yeah. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, it was a, a pleasure to talk to you and uh, follow us on Facebook, follow us on LinkedIn, and don't forget to contact us also on our webpage and tune in to our next Bad Talk and uh, stay safe and stay charged. <laughs>